Hey guys, it's Brie here from Blossom and Branch Farm and today I wanted to talk to you guys about chemicals in the garden, specifically a chemical called PFAS. Now we've spoken in a few videos recently about concerns with PFAS in the garden. I've gotten some pushback from people saying that, well, there's already PFAS in the environment, in the rainwater, blah, 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 and so we shouldn't care because we can't do anything about it. So let's talk about it. Should we be concerned about PFAS in the garden? So what are PFAS? PFAS is the acronym for pair and polyfluoroalkyl substances. These are also called forever chemicals and they're found in a lot of different substances. Teflon nonstick coating, waterproof fabrics, waterproof carpeting, uh, even some personal care products like makeup, shampoo, shaving creams. It's in a lot of different things. Now, recently the EPA has adjusted downward the amount of PFAS that is acceptable in our drinking water because yes, it is found in our drinking water. So this has been in response to growing concerns, uh, growing studies and things that are coming out about the major health impacts from PFAS in our bodies. What are some of these health concerns that happen when we're looking at PFAS? Well, there are a few. There's mounting research that is linking PFAS to a wide range of health effects. So things from kidney and testicular cancers, endocrine disruptions, and this is particularly true in communities that have heavily PFAS contaminated water. These are called forever chemicals because really in terms of our lifetimes, they're going to be around forever, um, thousands of years. It's not like we're ever going to see these chemicals leached out of our soil or eaten by microbes or anything like that, unless some research comes along that helps us on that front, let's hope. So as you can guess, with the prevalence of PFAS in so many products from drinking water to food to products that we use on a daily basis, is this something we should be concerned about in our garden? In my opinion, Yes, and I'll tell you why. It is because PFAS can accumulate. So when we're looking at levels of contamination, it's not like you reach a certain level and then that's it, that's your peak contamination. PFAS actually accumulate in our bodies, they accumulate also in our soils, and increased accumulation is associated with increased risk. So we should take as many efforts as possible to avoid contamination, in my opinion. So what does that mean for our gardens? What are the things that I'm looking for when I'm looking at PFAS contamination and things that I'm concerned about? Well, one of my biggest concerns is soils and compost, which is why we now only make Make our own compost because I know what's going into it. Many composts, especially municipal composts that utilize things like biosolids and animal manures, biosolids by the way also called biosludge which is human waste, uh, are contaminated with PFAS and applying them to your garden soil ends up contaminating your garden soil with PFAS. And again these are forever chemicals so this is not going to go away once you've started accumulating contamination. The EPA has actually done studies of various types of compost, so municipal compost, home compost, green waste compost, all kinds of things. It found PFAS in every single one. So at the end of the day what we need to remember is that compost just because compost is a organic byproduct doesn't necessarily mean that you can apply an unlimited amount of it safely to your soil um, again if it's contaminated with PFAS the more and more you add the more accumulation of PFAS you are going to have in your soil so in those studies that the EPA did of various types of compost, the EPA also found PFOA and PFOS, which have actually been phased out in the United States, which just shows how long these things stick around. And again, studies were actually showing higher levels of PFAS in the homemade compost than in just green waste compost. So possibly because it's already in our food that we're composting. The other place that it can sneak into your compost pile is in compostable paper, compostable plates, compostable bowls and cups. So those compostable plates have actually been shown that many of them are coated with PFAS because PFAS are actually kind of like a waterproofing substance. So if you take a paper plate and you coat it with PFAS, it makes it more waterproof. So that's good for things like disposable paper plates. So if you put paper plates that contain PFAS into your composting pile at home, you're contaminating your compost pile. So this possible contamination in compost combined with the fact that using too much compost every year leads to excess phosphorus issues is part of the reason why we really don't do compost here at the farm anymore. We do very little on our newer beds, but really we're relying more on cover crops to add nutrients back into our soil and to add organic matter. 
The other thing I'm always thinking about is what I'm storing my soils in. So I've been trying to move away as much as possible from storing soil in any kind of plastic bins, trash cans, things of that nature. And that's because many plastics like fluorinated HDPE have been found to be leaching PFAS into the substances stored within them. Fluorinated HDPE is just a plastic product that has basically been fluorinated, and that is to make it a stronger plastic that withstands weather, it withstands sun and UV rays. Um, it's just a stronger product. And so there are many HDPEs that are fluorinated. And this includes the containers that hold things like pesticides and herbicides and even some fertilizers. So if you are someone who uses those products, you should be aware that a lot of those containers are fluorinated HDPE. And even if you're not concerned about the effects of those pesticides on your garden, you should be concerned about the fact that those pesticides are likely contaminated with PFAS that you're now spraying on your soil. Another thing that I've been seeing go viral a little bit is the recommendation to compost inside HDPE trash cans. This is another thing that I am avoiding, again, because it's hard to know whether HDPE has been fluorinated or not. And in my opinion, there still isn't quite enough research on what happens when you are heating and cooling and heating and cooling a moist substance like compost inside of plastic. What is being leached into that compost? Now, it may be perfectly safe, but it may not. So in my mind, I'm gonna go the safe route. I'm just gonna compost on the ground, uh, you know, even if that means that I have to do a little bit more work in order to keep it composting and happy. There are other sneaky potential sources of PFAS like garden hoses. That's a really hard one to avoid, but I believe you can source out PFAS free garden hoses. And one of the other areas that I'm being cautious is in using paper products in the garden. They're actually now finding that paper mills are a big source of PFAS contamination to water supply. So with that comes concerns when we're looking at anything that uses recycled paper products. So recycled toilet paper rolls. So I've been seeing a lot of people recommending starting seeds in toilet paper rolls. Um, another one is in using recycled paper products. So you might have seen our video where we talk about using pit moss, which is a recycled paper product. Now that company has done some PFAS testing on one of its products. I haven't seen PFAS testing from all of its products, which is why we aren't using that product at the moment because we just don't know if it has PFAS or not. Now it does contain a lot of recycled paper products in it. And so when we look at how much PFAS is in paper products, a big piece of me thinks there's probably a good chance that maybe there's some PFAS in there. I'm not saying that there is or that there's not, but just be mindful of it. Now, this is the place where it starts to get a little bit tricky because I don't want to fear monger around the no dig method and using cardboard as a smother in the garden. But cardboard is another one that we are cutting out in any form in our garden use. Because again, a lot of cardboard is being made with recycled fiber and recycled paper and recycled cardboard. So a lot of cardboard does have PFAS in it. Pizza boxes are an example. Pizza boxes have PFAS in it because it helps waterproof the pizza box. So is that something that if the recycled cardboard we're using to smother our grass in the garden, if it's been made with anything with PFAS in it, we're contaminating our soil. So a better option, if you wanna do that no dig method, is we're recommending do a nice thick layer of leaves on the base to smother and form a mat instead of using that cardboard. I hope this video was informative and not scary. My goal is not to scare you. I think that we just need to be mindful, especially with all of the new research that's coming out about the dangers of PFAS, the side effects of PFAS, the effects that it can have on our health. And these are very serious impacts. This isn't just something that is a conspiracy theory this has been proven in numerous studies. We'll link some below, but just something to bear in mind. So those are some of the things we're looking out for in our garden. If you have anything to add, please feel free to put it below. If you enjoyed our content and our video, we would really appreciate a like and a subscribe because that helps us here a lot with our regenerative farm. All right, guys, we'll see you in the garden. Per and per, per polyfluoroalkyl, alkyl, and poly, for per and, Per and polyfluoro...